Straight to the final, second and third. Playing a semifinal to get to play the top seed after round robin. Straight to the final, second and third. Playing a semifinal to get to play the top seed after round robin. things off for Ontario, throwing the Yellow Rocks in. It'll sit down just in the back of the 12 foot. Tracy it's Horgan and her team to put up a corner guard. Stephanie Barbo, the lead of this Northern Ontario team from Sudbury, Ontario. Just a little strong on that yeah. guard as it'll slide into the rings and now Amber Gebhardt will have a hit. And roll to the center line, protect her own stone and lie two in this first Normal end. Down. Whoa. Whoa. Right off. Right off. Curl up. Curl up. Out of girl, Amber. Out of Just gets a nose hit, sits right there. It is. Ontario lying two. And a hit and roll. Stephanie Barbo, her second of the lead stones for this Northern Ontario team. from play, but her shooter roll out 12. as well. And now just that one rock just hanging on to the back of the 12 foot. It's gonna be the Ontario second. Darrell Johnson looking to just come top 12 foot. Use it as a guard in the rings. Back eight. Looks up. Back eight. Yeah. Back eight. Back it's not that bad. Oh, maybe it does. Sit down. Fight. Okay, that's fine. One uh, again will slide to the back. Stones in the back and a possible double for the second from Northern Ontario, Amanda Gates. Makes a double, Amanda Gates makes a double, sits right there. Snows. Now Northern Ontario lies one. And now a nose hit. Another on her second rock, Darrell Johnson wants to just sit right there in this open first end that we've seen in every one of our games so far. these teams are looking to rebound after losing their game. Both both their uh, teams lost their games this afternoon. Looking to bounce back and get a victory. And uh, try and climb up the standings yes. ladder. Yeah, hard. I'm sorry. Hurry. Hard. Whoa, whoa. Yep, yep. Hard. Normal. Again, as we continue to 
alternate shots, you know, with Third Rocks in Ontario, who has He's thrown the Yellow Rocks without hammer in this first end. It's Kim Brown. hit there for Kim Brown and again it'll be an alternating hit this time it's the third for Northern Ontario Lindsay Miners hit teams just alternating hits in this first end the first rock went into the rings and it's been a hits early on in this game Hoping to get the nose, but Kim Brown will That's roll out of play. Right Nothing in the rings and give Northern Ontario and Lindsay Miners a chance to draw in, see what draw weight's like. They're last of the third stones in this first end. Rock will sit just back eight foot. And Lisa Farnell quickly puts the broom down and she goes down the ice. Have a chance to hit and stick right there. Center doesn't hurt, but whatever. Just kill it. Now to skip stones, just one rock in play, an open hit for Lisa Farnell. Catch enough to roll it out of the rings, but her shooter does as well. And again, now it'll be the skip of this Northern Ontario team. In her second Canadian Juniors, played last year as a third, but through skip stones, went seven and five, finished in fourth place. So hoping to improve on that, get into the playoffs this year, and possibly win the Canadian Juniors and move on to play in the World Junior Championships in What's this Korea. We'll sit down, nice early draw weight for the skip of the Northern Ontario team. And now Lisa Farnell looking just for a little hit, maybe a roll towards the center line, make the blank that much more difficult for, for Horgan and her team. As both teams just trying to get a feel for each other early on in this game. Whoa! Hers isn't fine. Okay. That's fine, 
Just a nose hit for Lisa and now Tracy Horgan will have the hit rollout opportunity to try and blank this first end. Last rock of the first end, an open hit and roll out for Tracy Horgan to blank yes! and retain Hammer heading to the second. She's able to as it rolls out of play as she will hold on to Hammer heading to end two, a 0 0 game in a battle of Northern Ontario versus Ontario as you see them. Both in the middle of the pack, Ontario at three and three, Northern Ontario four and four. Of course, no undefeated teams left. Northern Ontario was sitting at four and two, lost their last two games and dropped down to the middle of the pack. Ontario looking to for another win to try and climb their way up and catch up to the leaders. Tight. Tight. Top four. Take a look. Careful. Yep, yep. Oh, we're good. Fight. Good, good judge. Nice awesome. Better weight from the lead of it. Ontario Amber Gebhardt as she sits just on the top of the button. But rather than throw up the corner guard, that first rock in a good position for Ontario. It's going to be a hit for Stephanie Barbo. Yep. Yep. Hard. Hurry. Hard. Yep, yep, yep. Roll it. Get a little roll towards the outside. And we'll sit down full 12 foot. And now it'll be Ontario and their lead, Amber Gebhardt, looking for a little roll towards the center line on her second rock of the end. Yep. Normal. Hard. 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 Hard, really hard, hard. Hard right up, hard. Hard. Big sweep just to try and catch enough as it just remove it from play. And now nothing in play, a chance. Stephanie Barbo to put up the corner guard. Would have liked that one a little more off the center line. And now Lisa Farnell can ask her Stick second. Darrell Johnson to draw around it. Just off the center line, take away any opportunity to play that intern draw for Northern Ontario. It's not only moving. Okay. Alright, that's fine, Daryl. That's okay. See you, Daryl. That's fine. Just too strong as she'll slide to the back of the 12 foot. We'll give Morgan and her team a chance to draw around with the second stones. Amanda Gates to put one in behind cover of that stone that. Their lead, Stephanie Barbo put up their last rock.
That one, it'll sit just on the T line, not buried fully behind that guard. And a chance Darrell Johnson can try and get to just the draw. face of it. Just going to play the straight draw, freeze on top of it. You get to the inside of this rock, you will be shot stone. Where line's tight. That's good, top eight. Yeah, that line's really tight. Hard line. Hard. 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 Okay, roll it. Hey, that's fine, no. Can't that's get by the guard, just chips off it. That's fine. That's fine, now. Northern Ontario line one. And a chance that it chips it over to the other side. Draw behind it. And lie two. Wanting to tuck a piece behind that guard, but it'll just slide too deep. It will sit down to be second shot. But behind the T line, as it doesn't get buried behind that guard, yeah. a hit and roll opportunity. I kind of like It's gonna go far, but Amber, take it if you can. It'll get okay, that's a good. little bit of a roll. It sits full four foot shot stone, but wide open, and an opportunity for Lindsay Miners to try and make a hit and roll of her own. Get in behind cover. curls and it'll roll out of play. Still is Northern Ontario lying one, but an opportunity to lie like two. That other okay. stone of theirs wide open. Actually, Could I don't be, mind doing this either. Yeah, okay. Could be an open hit. Yeah, let's pull it in. Let's go in here. Okay. Let's come this way. What do you think weight-wise? Lisa Farnell deciding to get Aggressive on this. They are second shot right now, Northern Ontario line one. The chance though, if you tuck one in behind, possibly get a steal, but it does hang out. I believe Northern Ontario with that opportunity to hit and roll. Or just Where? Remove this yellow rock to lie two again. So a big Line's chance really to try and take Line's advantage good. of a miss. That's good. Well, if you can, well, if you can, whoa, we got tons of room. Lots of room, girls. Tons of room, guys. Tons of room. Okay, yeah, 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 take it right back. <laughs> okay, it's fine, Kim. Kim Brown not able to tuck one behind. You see it's open, and it will be a chance. Ice running fairly straight here at the Fort Art, Fort Williams Curling Club. Team's coming over, playing at the Port Arthur earlier on today, so a little different ice service they're playing on. And Lindsay Miner's now looking for a hit and roll. Yeah. Yeah. Northern Ontario a chance to score their deuce. Just get by that guard. Does it roll too far out into the open? Yep. You're out there. Normal? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that's good.
So with that one rolling too far, Lisa Farnell will have a hit and roll. Still Northern Ontario lying too as she's hitting Shotstone. Trying to get in behind that one guard out in front with her first rock at the end. Just get a Wait. little bit of a roll. It looks like it is shot stone. And of course, Tracy Horgan to would probably otherwise try and make that hit and roll in behind cover. Good hit and roll, maybe even possibly set up three for this Northern Ontario team if you tuck it fully buried in behind. to hit and we'll try and get him behind. Make sure when she does sit right there to lie second shot. Just a little roll out. It's looks as though it rolled too far. Like, yeah. I mean if we were really ballsy we could call the draw. But do you wanna come to this? Gives it gives a double for two though. No, All let's right. just let's just okay. do this. Yep. Um I'll that way most they can get is two. You got it. Okay. We're second, and we could call the draw if we were going to be ballsy, but um, I don't want to leave any kind of double for three. So let's, we're just going to try and leave this a little longer and see if we can get a roll out of this behind that guard. Make like, life a little difficult. I don't know. That's the Farnell's last rock of the second end without the hammer. It's Northern Ontario lying one. She's looking for that hit and roll. Neither, neither team's been able to make it behind oh, that guard. Want to make sure hard, she does catch a piece hard. to remove it. But it'll okay. slide right by and she didn't want to give up the three and now a open yeah. hit for Tracy Horgan is a big miss from Lisa Farnell in her last. Trying to go for the roll, flashes that hit, and it'll be a wide open hit for an early 3 nothing lead for this Northern Ontario team. <coughs> Last rock of the second end, Tracy Horgan from Sudbury, Ontario. Looking to pick up an early 3 0 lead over the. Needs to hit and stick around Not to pick Trace. up that three as she will, as Northern Ontario takes an early 3 0 lead. It's draw nine from the 2006 Eminem Meat Shops Canadian Juniors. Luke Coley back inside the Fort William Curling Club. Stephanie Barbo is starting things off for Northern Ontario as they now have a 3 0 lead. Capitalized with the hammer. A big miss from Lisa Farnell with her last rock of that end. Open, open flash. Allowed an open hit for that big three ender nice from the Nor sweet. Northern Ontario team. Nice wait, Trey. Whoa! Right off. Curl up. Curl up. Oh yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's good. Unable to hold their shooter is Amanda Gebhardt. And there's now a wide open rings and house.
Second rock goes into the rings, and Amanda Gebhardt, who's familiar with the Canadian Juniors, was there in 2003 as a lead. Her team went nine and three, lost the semifinal that year to Desiree Roberts in Alberta. Amber. Amber's second rock will roll out of play again. Another rock going to be the rings in Northern Ontario, and Amanda Gates. Sit down, T line. Another hit, Darrell Johnson. Just looking for an open hit. Bam. Yep. Of course, both these teams yep. on a losing whoa, skid. Whoa, whoa, both lost their last game. Northern Ontario losing their last two. Both looking to change the ways and pick up a W here this evening. Just catching up as Amanda Gates will push that one out of the rings. And again, another draw into the rings as Ontario has the hammer in this third end. For the first time in this ninth draw, Darrell Johnson looking to just draw to the wide side. Put a rock in the rings. Possibly get a miss. Score two, otherwise, look to blank this third end. We're losing rings fast. <laughs> okay, well, Next week, oh, just to okay. try and get it in as it'll Great get, shot, get in full Beauties. 12 foot right on the wide side of the rings. As you're Lisa saying they're running out of rings. It just gets in to the fat chunk of the 12 foot on the left hand side of your screen. An open hit for Lindsay Miners now. Shooter looks as though it will roll out of play. Again, and there'll be another draw. This time, Kim Brown, the third for Ontario, as they now trail 3 0. Both these teams sitting at 500. Ontario 3 and 3. Northern Ontario. Just the one rock in play this end. Uh, looking like we're 
destined for a blank unless a flash will come from one of these players. And Lindsay Miners looks to yeah, yeah. and stay in the rings for this Northern Ontario team, yeah. leading 3 0. That she will do, gets a little inside roll. Northern Ontario throwing red, lies one. Normal. Kim Brown has a hit of her own. They will sit right there as well. And we'll keep trading, okay. alternating hits. Best. Things fairly clean in this third end. Tracy Horgan, already a 3-0 lead, has a chance to hit and sit right there. Yep, yep. Without the hammer in this third Whoa. end, sitting at 4-4 four four in their ninth game this year as Canadian Juniors. Gets a nose hit, sits top eight, little top little 12. Little good, eh? You got it. Lisa Farnell is looking to stick around as her shooter rolls out. Now it's Tracy Horgan a chance just to draw into the rings. Sit right on the center line, make that hit and roll out that much more difficult for Lisa Farnell is she'll have to roll out half the rings rather than out on the side. But it will be just a hit and roll, assuming Horgan puts this one just in the top of the forefoot their last rock of this third end, leading 3-0. Tracy, she'll sit down on the button before it even stops. Lisa Farnell puts the broom down, and she will have a blank attempt. Their last rock of the third. Chance to blank this end and try and get things set up in the fourth. Yeah, nose. I'm probably going to play like control at this. Slow down. to hit and roll out. Lee Farnell Whoa. from the Peterborough Curling Club. Yep. yep. Yeah. Wants to hold on to Hammer to head to the floor. Whoa. Yep. Needs to cross the face and roll out, but she'll good, stick around and pick up a single Why point. Makes it 3-1 as we'll head to the fourth end. Northern Ontario, a two-point lead. We'll have the Hammer back. Get hard. to start things okay, off, okay. looks to throw the center line guard. Nice shot. Ontario down by two after Lisa Farnell <laughs> missed a hit in the second end, which ended up giving a three-ender to Tracy Horgan. 
and was unable to hit and roll out with her last rock to hold on to Hammer as we now play in the fourth end. Are you sure? Yeah, so First rock went out in front of the rings for Gebhardt, and now she's going to hit that stone which Stephanie Barbo threw on her first rock of the Close, end. Yep, I'm listening. Play into the rings yeah. now, just that one rock out in front. Hard. Hard. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was hey. really down. Okay. You, she slides right by. You hear Lisa say, just tight, and is it overcurled? This is hitting that stone, and now a chance for Morgan to ask Stephanie Barbo to draw around that guard out front to lie two after lead stones already leading 3-1. Nice. Just for weight. Come down a bit. T-line. Top 12. Top 12 again. Just get into the top of the rings, won't be buried behind that guard. Control. But after lead stones, it is Northern Ontario lying to. Control. And Darrell Johnson now gonna give her herself a try at this hit and try and roll over behind that guard. Towards the center Better. line, it is shot stone. But Horgan now can hit and roll. Straight as they try to set up uh, another deuce, possibly a bigger end. We'll get another miss and skip stones from Lisa Parnell. As they capitalize in the second end, picking up three. Ontario lies too with the hammer playing in four. Yeah. Normal. Normal down. Yep. Whoa. Yep. Yep. Hard. Hard over. Hard. Trying to get the roll behind. Hard. Shot. Looks like she'll get the roll. Maybe a little bit open as it is. Shot stone in the back of the house. Yep. Yep. Gates going to try and just draw around that guard. Wants to sit in front of the T-line in, in a good position. We got a curl, but it's still on. Where? Coming down. Just too strong as it'll slide okay, okay. to the back. It will be shot stone. Okay. But too deep and it'll allow Kim Brown to draw around that guard as Ontario is without the hammer. They look to try and steal, trailing by two.
clubhouse. Okay, yep, 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 yep. Hard, 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 hard. Great shot, Kim. The way to go set shot stone. Just biting the top of the forefoot, partially buried behind that stone. Another you get foot the guard, if they could drag okay. that, Board? gets yeah. by. Lindsay Miners now going to try and make a play on that stone. Just needs to get right by the guard. And get to nose would be a perfect shot. And the third from Northern Ontario. Just gets by the guard and it looks like it just about got to the nose. Sits right on the center line, gets a bonus and chips that other yellow rock out of the back board. of the rings. Northern Ontario yeah. lies three just again board. with the hammer. Normal. Board. Trying to catch that one at the back as well as he makes shot, the Kim. double. Sit shot stone in a good position, top eight foot for Northern on for Ontario rather. And as they were looking at three, Kim Brown's last rock and Lindsay Miners looking to get at that stone again. Roll away and lie too. Control. We really want to get this roll over. Time to be buried behind that guard, but will be shot stone in the back of the rings and allow Corgan to make a play on it. Lie too. She looked to pick up another multiple point end with the hammer and extend her lead again. Already leading 3 1. Has the hammer playing in the fourth. the last time she was looking for that roll. She ended up flashing and giving up three. That was the second end. Yes, it is a 3-1 lead. Northern Ontario leading Ontario. Okay, 
just get a nose hit and it'll allow Horgan again to pick up a deuce, extend her lead to four, the chance to hit and sit right there, pick up a deuce, and make it a 5 1 game for four ends. In this battle of Ontario, it's Tracy Horgan is down there, ready to go. She looks to stop her losing ways, lost her last two games, looking to change that. Win here this evening over Ontario. And a chance to pick up a deuce, her last rock of N4. Hit right on the nose as Tracy Horgan picks up a deuce, makes it a 5-1 lead as we'll head to the fifth end of play. Out here tonight, this evening, for the ninth draw from the M&M Meat Shop Canadian Juniors. Our matchup is a Battle of Ontario. Of course, we're here in Thunder Bay, heart of Northern Ontario, and we are now joined by Al Hackner, a legend and two-time Briar champion, two-time world champion. Nice of you to join us here, Al. It's my pleasure. Uh, welcome to my hometown and home club. Is uh, yes, and home club. Uh, been curling here for uh, close to 30 years. And uh, I was able to actually uh, see the Silver Broom. It's actually found its home here at the Fort William Curling Club, a chance to take a look at that, something I've never seen before. Yes, the poor Silver Broom was lost for quite a few years there. It apparently was uh, lost yep. in Europe for a while and then lost in some warehouse in right, right over. Winnipeg, apparently the story goes. But now it's here and uh, we built a very nice cabinet for it and uh, it's out there for anybody to look at. It's got a great home and uh, of course you were the last team to win it in 1985 before it went over to a different title sponsor and of course now you get a chance to watch some juniors play in your in your home club of course you gotta like the way the northern ontario ladies are playing a 5-1 lead over ontario yeah they've come out very strong um <clears throat> pretty well making everything they're throwing at with very very few misses uh whatever misses the ontario uh, team has uh put out there the northern ontario will be able to put them right on the board so that's why you see the score definitely the Northern Ontario men not doing as well, sitting uh, near the bottom of the stand, like one in seven, but definitely uh, the, a younger team. This team's been here last year, three of the four members at the juniors last year had a chance to build on that. Well, experience counts uh, so much anywhere down the line. I know the first prior I went to uh, in 1980, I was fortunate to have a couple of teammates that had been there before, and Richard Lang especially had, having won their prior before. I can only imagine what it would have been like if the four of us had gone there uh, absolutely green. We would have been, would have been scared right out of the rink. Yeah, it's a, it's a different experience coming from provincial play to, to, the, to a national stage. Of course, here it's, it's not quite the arena. It's, it's a still a curling club, but it's, you're playing against teams you've never seen before. Well, that's true, and, it's, uh, and you're away from home. And it is somewhat sort of an arena atmosphere with this, the people out in the stands, especially at the, the other club where you have the, quite the big... Uh, group of people up in the stands there you and like it's, the uh, it has sort of a uh, arena atmosphere. You like the well it's uh, exciting for the kids and yeah. of course we're glad to be here and now uh, another miss by Ontario and we'll see if the uh, Northern Ontario team can capitalize again they're lying two without the hammer leading by four points early on just in the fifth end. Started off a four and two record and lost their last couple games trying to change their ways get in a winning mode try and run run the table maybe even get into the playoffs only the top three teams of 12 make it so it's not a good percentage of teams making it in yeah, you're right they pretty well have to uh, run the table here and try and get uh, every one of their wins there but uh, you know obviously every, you, you take one game at a time and this game is is uh, well in control halfway through it so they'll uh, 
see if they can hang on. Well, they're trying to peel that guard. They end up just taking off it, removing one of their own stones from, from the rings. And now Ontario has a chance, instead of looking at two Northern Ontario top stones, eight. just one can try and freeze on top, try and generate some offense that way. Well, any guards out in front, uh, you're, you're glad to have them and you're going to make use of them. And, uh, and you know, that's yeah, the line's really tight, guys. Miss a, a chance Touch to eliminate tight. a guard out in front when you're up points. That's, uh, We're <laughs> really tight, yep. Well, definitely in hard, guys, yourself, hard. still curling in the in the senior ranks now, again with Rick Lang. Stop it. Hard rate and hard. When they okay, well, uh, oh, no bounce. No go bounce. to the next level, we're going to the association playoffs, and, and okay, there's that's fine. two that's spots good, available there to our okay. 16 provincials, so we still have another level after that. Of course, we saw you back at uh, back in Winnipeg early on in the year, our first event of the year, the Ashamade Ender Open, playing with uh, David Nedwin and Arnold Asham. So now you're back. Now we see you in your home club and a chance to watch some curling rather than than see you out on the ice. Yeah, that's when I first uh, watched firsthand uh, the Curl TV in action, and uh, quite impressive, folks. You got to be back here and see all the, the technical yeah. equipment here, and these fellows do a great job. Well, it uh, means a lot coming from a, a guy like you, two-time Briar champion, '82 and '85, and then went on to win the worlds that year. And uh, talking with uh, Morris here, one of the club past president at your Fort William Club. He was telling stories when he went over in 85 to Glasgow, Scotland, With when you guys were yeah. able to win it. And oh, yeah. Do you want a little less? I can give you a little less if you want. good stories. And oh, a little more? How much fun he had. And of course, he's off to his 25th prior this year in Regina, where we will be at as well. Control. Well, our curling club here um, has um, many things we can talk about, but one of them is, is the are the are great fans we have. Yeah. And, uh, there is there yeah. quite a good group that go to the buyers every year and they go to the world championships every year Heart. and they're uh, true curling fans when, uh, when you can count in the teams the number of buyers that people okay, that that's fine. yeah and okay. you see the support they get for for an event like this the junior championships you may not know some of the curlers is the this northern ontario team from sudbury not from right around here but always out here supporting the home the home province and that goes for uh Every province. I mean, you can you can look out in the stands or in into the into the curling club here itself, and uh, you can see the team colors uh, riddled throughout the uh, stands, and people are cheering hard for the province. It's uh, like any national. It's uh, it's a great event. Yeah, it's the great. You get uh, everybody out cheering for the home province, and everybody sporting all the colors, and it's great to see you meet a ton of people, and of course, great curling out on the ice, both men's and ladies, at a junior event. With uh, the Battle of Ontario, of course, yourself being in Northern Ontario, uh, you got to be rooting for them a little bit in this one. Well, that's true. I know. I mean, over the years, uh, we're, we're both basically from the same province, but there was always a pretty good rivalry, no matter who was uh, who was representing uh, the Ontario part. Every time we went, it went head to head with them. There was always a that was a good battle. Uh, really hard. On the Ontario hard. teams, especially the years that uh, we played. Hard. Right? hard. Always had good rep. I mean, we know we, knew we always had to play well. Hard. Yeah, definitely. Daryl. Daryl. Right over. Right over. Right over. See a hit there from Kim Brown to lie to for Ontario. So a little turn of events. It was Northern Ontario lying to earlier on in the end. Now Ontario lies to as they need to score a multiple point end, try and claw their way back. Still a lot of, a lot of curling left just in the fifth end. They trail by four. The ice is very playable out here too. It's uh, it's conducive to uh, big ends and big comebacks. And you know, just because you're down three or four points doesn't mean the game's over. You can still make all the finesse shots you ever want to make out here. It's uh, very very good playable ice. Yeah, we've seen a we've seen a few leads early on and teams being able to claw back. Just need to make sure you get your get a deuce with the hammer and uh, like when you're without. Make sure you uh, try and force them just to that single point, Actually, not only give him. up the big ends. Do you like that instead? And, uh, open flashes sure. are the big thing okay. that's hurt Lisa Farnell okay. in the second end. That three ender could have just been a deuce or possibly just a single point if she's able to make her last shot. So, one thing we take for granted as uh, we get older and as curlers, we've been uh, throwing our rocks uh, the same way for many, Where? many years. And we've grooved, grooved it pretty good so that our misses are 
you know, we don't really throw the really bad rock every once in a while, but we forget that we were all young at one time, and and uh, most of these curlers here have only been curling a couple of years, and it's it's really, it's really tough to groove something because you know it, it's 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 not uncommon for somebody just to throw a bad Sorry, one. Guys. It happens in curling, Sorry. definitely, and you know what you see it at uh, even the, even the men's and women's level. Ah. You've seen it throughout Sorry, the year, guys. have chances for big ends and not able to make the key shot, the key time, and. We saw that early, but like every one of these two girls out here, they if they stick with stay with the game, they will develop into uh, into great rock throwers. Uh, again, the, the key thing is is just time. They got to put their time in, and it just takes a long time to uh, groove a great delivery so that you don't have those open hit misses. And definitely, you we saw you out uh, chucking a few rocks after uh, after out on the ice hockey for a bit. Uh, shooting some pucks around, get a chance to get out there, throw some rocks as you're off to seniors next weekend. Uh, only hear both the uh, Port Arthur and the Port William being used for this event, so trying to get some time in, throw some rocks. Yeah, practice time has been, uh, been tough to get at. I know I've been on the ice only twice since uh, we played a little 6 in game last night and I threw some rocks earlier in the day, so my first time on the ice in probably about a week, so we're going to probably try and get another game in tomorrow night. Yep. Um, with, uh, okay. yep. The ice surface is in front of me, taken over by this event. It's, it's tough for the teams that are, are still competing in the different level to uh, stay sharp. Just T line. And again, it's Northern Ontario line two. And Lisa Farnell looking to just freeze down to that stone. No guards out front, so you got to use the rocks in play. One is behind the T line, so a freeze could possibly set up a deuce for her. The term that the tennis people use is uh, unforced errors, and, and, and every point on the board that's happened here has been an unforced error. It's been just uh, a fairly, fairly routine shot missed. T line girls! Hold on. No line yet. No line yet. Well, like you were saying, you, you take, those, take those no shots for granted. No line yet. Just so often T line. Okay, yeah, go, go, go. Just T. 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 And those well, things happen, no you say, in the junior curling. Bite. You see, it, it's a little more Bite. common than at the men's and ladies' level. It definitely can happen at any time in a game. Okay. Yep. Best shot out there, but then the very next swing, I think this swing, is an art too much. <laughs> slam that ball deep oh. into the bush. That's about my golf game as well. But, uh, junior curlers can make some excellent shots out there, but they're also very capable of, uh, of missing the easy one. But that's just the nature of the game. Well, it's like any sport. The more more times you throw it, the more the better off you are. And as you said, they're just getting going in their in their curling careers. A big stage for them early at the junior nationals and a chance to show their skills against the rest of the country and maybe have a little bit of nerves uh, playing your, against Northern Ontario first time they've ever played at a uh, a national championship against Northern Ontario for most of them. I think I can pull a Chazanoka and do that. Yes. Keep a shooter around. Yeah. Try it. It's worth it. I think so too, actually. Just normal, eh? We just got it like. Yeah, because I think if we even, bounce off even that. If we chip we're gonna... this and miss that, we got the one, right? Yeah, but I think if we hit that thick enough, like to miss that, I think our, our shooter's gonna get caught. Yeah. There? Yeah, it's normal. Looking at playing, uh, playing the double here to try and get that deuce. Looks like it's awfully flat it's to try and make that double. Uh, we gotta hit, we gotta play for the double, because otherwise our shooter's gonna roll out. This whole out or, I mean, this, uh, our shooter will, like if we hit a two nose, the street, uh, then we'll lose with that. With that much ice, I, I'm almost so. guessing she's throwing this, it's maybe with quite quiet weight, try and just get a half a rock and try and stick, stick the shooter for the two. Almost sort of a hit and roll and then use that other rock as a, as backing on that one side. It's there if you need it possibly, but it, it does, like you say, it does look a little flat whether she can get to it or not. We'll see the last rock of the fifth end for Lisa Parnell, trailing 5-1 to no. Northern Ontario's Tracy Horgan. Never, never. Close. Whoa! Yeah. Catch it. Hey. Just misses catching that one, and yeah. it'll just be a single point. Makes it 5-2 as we'll head to the fifth end break. We'll keep Al Hackner here for one, one more end if you got the yeah. time. Uh, 
talk to us a little bit longer. We'll be right back for the sixth end from the 2006 Eminem Meat Shops Canadian Juniors. Billy F. We love it. for the sixth end of action, uh, joined by Al Hackner again. Did you see uh, that fuzz? Nice to have you out here. Uh, good to see you, you watching some of the Junior fuzz. Curlin in your, your home club. Well, I've been fortunate to be off this week, so I've uh, seen a lot of action. I've been <laughs> over at the other club in this club and watched uh, <laughs> most of these uh, curlers get out to play. I've yet to see the, the, yellow, the young fellow from the, the territories yet. I'm looking forward to see, see him in action. The young 12-year-old from uh, David Aho from I'm Northwest chilling. Territories. I believe it is a, a, a junior record. Uh, his age, huh. being the youngest one, they're saying he has eight, a chance to play in eight more <laughs> national championships. That's just, that, I find that just amazing. And, uh, I'm looking forward Great to seeing him in action. Like, like I said, I've, I've been to both clubs back and forth. They just seem to be in the wrong place. Wrong place, wrong time. But Now Ontario needs to try and uh, go for the steal down 5-2 after five ends got the two centerline guards up but Stephanie Barbo gonna look to beat him, beat him there get around those centerline guards at this point for Ontario it's, uh, it's good it's, it's, it's all or nothing they have to almost play every end from this point on like it's the you're stealing the tenth end you have to steal and you have to uh, Can you bring it right back? generate some points so they right threw up the two center back, guards Chase. and it's all or nothing now for Ontario. They got really have to step it up a bit. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, just need to string. Stop four. Just worry about every shot, one shot at a time. Make the shot at hand, and then worry about the next one after you finish your other one. Just try to refocus. We heard uh, right. earlier on today in our Manitoba game, the coach Calvin Eddy came out and he said, "Just make sure focus on your release. Focus, keeping it clean." As we were talking, it's just. Ice seems to be real. You t said anything out. It's really unforgiving on this Fort William ice surface. Yeah, the clean releases straight to the room run so much differently than the ones that when you set out, set them out and they just, they just float, they don't come back. That's a quick spot. That's one. Okay. So this end, even though that one came in deep there, that's, that's actually still uh, pretty good for Ontario. They got their two rocks out in front and they got shot rocking behind. And they just have to keep uh, maintaining this aggressive uh, play here. Uh, if they were lucky, you know, the fortune up to get maybe steal a point or even the next end. Then they then they can maybe take it a little, take you know, a little bit more cautious after that. But they're almost at the point now where they got to really step it out and gamble. Yeah, take their chances. Maybe get a miss now from from Horgan. And Whoa, as we've no. as we were talking, it's we it had we have seen it before. It happened earlier in this game when Northern Ontario scored that big three. So. Just keep playing your game and try and clear, try and get get a steal here, and then, as you said, try and get the force and get back into it that way. Yeah. Well, there's been uh, many discussions out there about uh, Northern Ontario yeah. having its own representative. I know you're probably partial to to that. Do you think there should be a Team Canada at the uh, at the Briar at Where? the Briar, similar to the Scott or? Hi. Do you like trying to claw your way back through playdowns yep. and get earn yourself that berth back yep. at the at the Briar? I've never. Well, uh, hey, we're just I think maybe we're just for the Scott, the Team Whoa, Canada uh, prospect, and you know, for their sponsor works well for them. I've, uh, I'd be opposed for something like that coming into the Briar because you know the Briars since really 1927 is, is you know that's a lot of history there. And, and the minute you make a change, something like that, you're changing all the the history because. 
Randy Furby's uh, part of his record of not only winning Briars, but he's he's he's, he's uh, playing in Briars, and all those stats count towards uh, him and Alberta. Now, if he was Team Canada, that would change everything. Yeah, and he had to. It even gives more credentials to to those yeah. four Briar wins it's, and the five he's played in. He had to earn his way back through provincials to try and get back. Of course, yourself, you didn't have the, the luxury again of coming back in 83 and 86 after you had won it. Got back there a few other times when you earned your spot to get your, get your Purple Heart, and that's a, a dream for most curlers, male curlers in Canada, is get that Purple Heart and have a chance to play at the Briar. I mean, that's true. The, you know, like, it doesn't change whether you've won one or six. You still the chase to win that Purple Heart is still a goal. And now if you're Team Canada and you're back right back to the uh, to the Briar on an automatic uh, spot. That takes that's taking one year away from your career to, to try and win another Purple Heart. I mean, everybody wants to pile them up. Yeah. And uh, you see, Randy Furby could he almost needs another sleeve to try and put him on. You're up there as well. Of course, uh, with that win in '85, playing uh, Pat Ryan, I believe that was the final of that year against him. Yes, that's correct. Oh, you're that's kidding. The, the Iceman came out and a great shot to win it. and Just some, some great history uh, yourself and, and in this club, your home club. A lot of pictures of you Why up on the wall. The You've got to be proud. Now moving into senior play, probably want to put up some of those senior pictures. Well, we're taking it one step at a time here. Uh, I've been referred to a couple times this year as the, the rookie, so... It's been a while since anybody's called me a rookie, but I am a rookie senior career, so here I am. <laughs> well, it's got to be feel good to be a rookie. Then uh, you were the you were the veteran for a while, Whoa. back uh, just played in the Briar a few years ago, so I had a chance to uh, to get back there. Another Purple Heart, like you were saying, as we were talking Team Canada at the Briar, and I myself, I don't like it. it you try and uh, you get that the play downs, like we were saying, and and then you're in game shape for the it's a it's a you're off. When everybody else is playing and play downs to try and what do you get think? back there, you're there. sitting, sitting at the, yeah. sitting at your house or or just throwing rocks. This it's is a little okay different too, than okay? playing that competition. Is light. Hey. You know, one makes one year makes a big difference. Uh, up until I believe what 1994, the uh, yeah, junior champ sat around for a whole year one. and then went and played in the worlds, and it was that's very difficult uh, for you, you. Think it's hard to be really? uh, for a veterans uh, in the uh, Scott to sit around for a year and then come back and play the Scott again. If you think that's difficult. Uh, it's, it's even harder as a, as a junior curler because you're, uh, a year is a year is a big uh, a long time for if you've only been curling for three or four years and you've got to wait a year that's you don't know what's happening people could be moving away and uh, some you could have an injury or all kinds of stuff can happen you you can be so far different from the team that you won with by the time you showed up to the worlds. Well, and then that it also brings in age limits as well at the world level. If you you win it at your last year, you probably are not able to. You won't be able to go to the worlds the next year, even if you win it. As we see uh, in our featured game between Northern Ontario and Ontario, it is that yellow Ontario stone, which is shot stone. Tracy Horgan going to ask her third, Lindsay Miners, to try and hit and roll. Chance to lie, too. The Ontario team basically is still throwing it pretty good, but they just seem to throw that one untimely miss. And it just, uh, whatever end they built up is, is gone in, in, in one miss, uh, whether it be the skip or the third or, or whoever's thrown that one miss in there, and they're, it's, uh, it's, it's been costing them every end. Just that, just that key shot that they're missing, like you're saying. And it's 5-2, and so they're trying for the steal. There is some backing here you can try and freeze one on. No guards out in front on the center line really to protect them without the hammer. So not in a great position to try and steal this end. Need to, would need a miss out of uh, Tracy Horgan and her last rock to try and possibly yeah. steal without a guard out. Got something gross there. That was nasty. This is the first of the skip stones for Lisa Farnell, trying to set up a possible steal. Wants to lock one right on top. T's good. 
hopefully get a miss from Horgan and a chance to protect it with her last rock at the end. Chips a little bit and lies too. Looks as though they may be uh, changing a little bit of strategy instead of going for the steal, trying to just get the force in this end. Well, I think in that situation there, she was, she had the option of, of, of making the, the freeze in there, but the play, the, the play all lent itself to that uh, she could have done exactly what she did. So, being short probably wasn't wasn't good. You, you can miss, she missed, you can miss that freeze heavy and end up with this result. So that was almost like a two for one option. Well, and now uh, it'll be Northern Ontario trying to maybe make a double. It's it's an Ontario lying two right now. Make a double, and if they can avoid the jam, maybe even bring a couple of those other biters into play. But a big end would almost uh, kill Ontario in this situation. They're down three points without the hammer. Tracy is able to make this shot, remove a couple of these yellows, and pile up a few more points and I'd almost seal this victory for her. Ontario's previous loss, they, uh, they come out just cold and give up give up a five or six point lead in the first four ends and it's almost like the same thing's happening again tonight. <clears throat> Doesn't make the double actually jams on the back and yeah. I'm gonna freeze. Ontario in this situation if Northern Ontario is able to take a 7-2 lead after six. It's four ends remaining, five points. It's tough to come back. Really this is the question. Yeah, but if she hits any other piece other than no, she'll roll the out. Danger being more than this in there. That's what that, well, that's what we're calling right now. Double shot. Like you like that, or do you like? I mean, because we can do the easy like. And if you're saying, well, flop I'm heavy, and board it over, and then, and then sometimes you add that just extra I mean, we'd be sitting and three on. Ice and you're throwing and make, you know, make her do the nose for to get a one. right by the rock, so you gotta. You are gonna. I mean, do you like that? Just, it's just barely moving, like with backhand. Kind of like that. I mean. We're just discussing right now if they like trying to go for the steal or. Yeah, I don't mind that. To be honest, I don't mind that actually. That's yeah. Let's play that. Looks like she's uh, center line one. Change her mind. This way? Yeah. Play a control weight hit on that center line stone that shot rock belonging to Northern Ontario. Yeah, okay. Amber and uh, Durrell sort of talked her out. She was looking at the freeze, going to play a control weight hit on that stone center line, try and get it through the rings, even go across the face of that back stone to. Get it out of there. Stay close. Whoa! Yes. Yes. Whoa! Yes! Yep! Yes! Hard! Quick! Hard! Punches it through the hole, makes a double, lies three. Good shot there. Lisa Farnell, her last rock. I'm fine with that. Now Tracy Horgan. Doesn't really have a shot to score to as Ontario is lying three. It's exactly the kind of end that uh, Ontario, Ontario wanted to develop in here. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can claw your way back in the game. One is by going all out and if you make good shots, uh, set up the steal. The other way is to make a very good force. Like if uh, Ontario was to come in here and make this shot, uh, Ontario makes this shot and, and gets their one, that's a good force. but. This shot is easily easily missed, and uh, catch a half a rock roll out. There's there's your steal too, right back in the game. Yeah, and just five two right now. So, you know what? You never know. Could be a pick or something. You never want to see that, but you know what? It's it's a sport. Anything can happen, and you make her throw it. And you're lying three right now on her last rock. So, in a good situation for Ontario. We'll get the force this end. Yep. Yep. Whoa, whoa. 
uses that other one. And like you were saying, just if that curls a little bit more, it avoids jamming on that back one. But you know, it's one of the we've been at we've been in this situation many many times over the over the years where you we go to the other end, you see, and you say, if they threw it better, we had scored two there. You know, she was fortunate that she she missed it enough to to tick it over and jam on the back one, so it's a score of one, but a very very fortunate one. And another one of the situations where if the uh, Ontario sitting now and going back the other way, going boy, she threw that better. We steal two. Exactly. And uh, well, thank you, Al, for joining us. Uh, of course, a legend, and we're here in his home club, watching his home province, part of his province, Northern Ontario, play Ontario in a six-two lead now for Northern Ontario over Ontario. Have a, enjoy the rest of the week, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you around. Good luck at Senior Playdowns next week. Very good. Thanks for having me, and uh, keep up the good work. Uh, you're doing a great thing for curling here, and I'm uh, looking forward to more, more stuff from you guys. Thank well, you. thanks a lot. Stephanie Barbo now for Northern Ontario is a grade 12 student at College Notre Dame High School. Just for weight. Yep, yep. Remember Gebhardt, the lead for this Ontario rank, is a recreation and leisure study student Whoa. at the University of Waterloo. Looking to just wow. move these stones around in the ranks as they need to keep many rocks no. in play as no, possible. No. Uh, let's Try get and have some backing and move some stones behind the T-line to allow for freezes. with a four-point lead, playing the seventh. It's going to be Amanda Gates, a sports psychology student at Laurentian University, trying to peel off that corner guard, not yeah. allow anything in behind. Yeah. And the roller shooter out as well, nothing out in front. And now the play will become come into the rings. It'll be probably another little tap. So they got that one stone in a good position for Ontario. Need to score two, maybe possibly get a break and score Anderson. three this end. Just down four, four ends remaining. Got to claw their way back for Darrell Johnson, the second on Ontario, criminal justice student Wait, at Ryerson University. Just chipped that top st stone, not at the angle they wanted to. Amanda Gates has a hit to try and remove that yeah. one yellow stone. 
lie three for this Northern Ontario team who has a four point lead playing in the seventh end. Looking to get out of their losing ways. Lost two in a row, want to change that here this evening with a win over Ontario. Use those stones as some backing, just a little tap. And still Northern Ontario lying three. As we're on to third stones with Ontario having the hammer, it's Lindsay Miners, who's a computer networking student at Sioux College. Big pocket to try and uh, freeze into a lot of stones. How do I play this now? To the fourth foot. Ontario's, they gotta try and start cleaning some of this up a little bit. Playing bigger weight, not just the taps. Kim Brown is a music student at Queen's University. She'll throw her first, looking for a hit, trying to hit nose yep. on the stone. Yep. We'll sit right there, hopefully get rid of a couple of those red hard, Northern Ontario hard, rocks. Quick, hard, hard, quick, right up, hard, hard, hard right up. Oh yeah, that's fine, Kim. Doesn't hit nose, but moves those red rocks around. As you see, it's still Northern Ontario with lying two. Lindsay just yep. looking to try and remove this Ontario stone. Doesn't matter if she loses her shooter. Removes that one stone that is be was behind the T-line for Northern Ontario. Good shot. That actually worked out in their favor. Right there. Rather than just okay. a straight takeout. That's okay too. Took away any backing behind the T-line for Northern for Ontario to try and use as they have the hammer trailing by four. Six two in the seventh. Just wants a freeze, Great don't want to tap. Kim. Just a little tap. Great shot there. As now both of those yellow stones will be difficult for Tracy right Horgan to remove. Right up there? Yeah. Yep. From this way it's straighter. But it's still Northern Ontario lying too, so no real way to try and get rid of him. Still in a not bad situation. She's gonna take away any uh, play on that yellow stone by throwing a guard with her first rock. Guard. 
So the first shot at the end of Skip Stones for Tracy What's Horgan, a commerce student at Laurentian University. He's going to try and throw a guard, protect that. Little stones just on the one side of center line, protect against a little tap back to remove it for Lisa Farnell. the job it takes away that little hit on that stone just on the left side of center line for Lisa yeah. Farnell. Ignoring that guard for a second. Okay. So you think if we hit that thin enough to yeah. crack that over there yeah. we're going to lose this one? No. It's going to roll but... Do you think it's going to roll yeah. past that one? Yeah. I think it might not. Yeah. Just because we got to figure out one big weight shot that's going to make us sitting many by the end of this. Yeah. I think that's the only... I think, like, I think we have to try it and just hope this one will squeak. Enough. I mean, the other option, I could play a little bit less weight. Yeah. The other option, I could play a little bit less weight. Don't do that. And just do it enough to tap this one back here. I still catch that, which is like, a, by a little bit less weight, I still mean about normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just can't throw a pistol. Because, I mean, if we hit this thin no. enough, it is going to squeak out it's this gonna way. It's going to jump. Yeah. Unless, what if it jumps up there Can... and bounces off that? That'd be beautiful. That would be awesome. I don't think it will, though. It'll you need a lot of weight it's, for it's, that Yeah, one. it's going to squeak that way. Um, Can we get anything off this? That's what I'm thinking. Um, well, is this gonna? That's gonna squeeze past. I don't think. I don't think we're gonna get a big enough piece of this one to get rid of that. That one's gonna bounce off that, and it might push this one back far enough. And this might roll to there, but. Well, I'm basically I'm basically looking to set up my last shot here, and I need to know whether I need to peel that off right now. If it's gonna involve this, that's something we can do. I mean, I don't mind trying this right now and trying to bounce off this. It's just this one's gonna end up getting pushed out over there. Oh, I'm not looking to no. do that. Are no, you no, kidding no. me? This to this. This to push that. This onto this and then back. It's gonna squeak past, eh? You gonna see flat? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but how many are we gonna lose? Are we gonna? If, it depends. On, it all depends on whether we're gonna lose this one. Or not. Well, they have called a timeout. Have their coach Dave Farnell come out and give his opinion. Or you can, or you can try and hit it real thin on the outside and try and slide it off the two Ooh. into the one. But you gotta, then you'll stay, and you'll just stay yeah. and it's a tough shot. Yeah, or you really can just tough. play it kind of straight back into the pocket now, and roll over, you've got all kinds of options. What? I don't mind just doing that. Huh? What happens if we hit this to do that? Just doing that. That'll get rid of something here. They might get a double. We're still okay for two there. Okay. okay, I don't mind doing that, just for now. And if we get something lucky off our shooter or something, okay. who knows? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. I kind of like coming this way at it. Get a bigger roll. Okay. Just because, just because if we get a roll, it'll get a, it'll get a harder roll coming this way. Okay. Please, even if we just bounce here, I don't think that'll be the end of the world. It'll no, be no, a no, double, no. but not a triple. Yeah. Um, do you like playing big weight at this? You, it's got to be reasonable. It's like firm. Yeah, firm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, you heard uh, the advice from the coach, Dave okay. Farnell, and at least Farnell, just trying to place a shot on this one rock, just to remove one of those, one of those uh, Northern Ontario red rocks. Wants to keep her shooter around as well. A little less. Doesn't want to set up any possible double or uh, or triple, possibly for Tracy Horgan or her last rock at the end. exactly where she wanted to make the double really? and now there's a pocket of three on top of that one lone northern ontario stone on the top of the four foot
guard is like just off that. center, but then she has around here. How much do you think you can see of that? An important shot now for Tracy Horgan is doesn't want to give up a big end to Ontario. She has a four point lead. Second, third, and fourth shot belong to Ontario. You can't see much, but then she has the in off this one too. But if we hit this, say we over curl. And if we hit and roll here. Freeze on it? We might end up tapping. Yeah, it's a tap. Yeah, it's true. And if we over curl and freeze to this one, that's not too bad either. Yeah, if we freeze right here, that's all right. And what happens if we tap them? Those three Rocks are just in a, in a strange position. The second, third, and fourth shot for Ontario and creating problems for Tracy Horgan. She's decided just to freeze to that stone just in the top of the forefoot. Would just be third shot. Doesn't want to tap it, which would push Ontario in for shot. If she sits in a good position, it may take away uh, the big end of more than just two for Ontario. So without the hammer, Tracy Horgan looking to just freeze to that stone.
needs to be almost near perfect. Last rock of this seventh end. Ontario in this situation like this. of Northern like Ontario was able to take a 7-2 lead after six. It's four ends remaining. So without the hammer, Tracy Horgan looking to just freeze to that stone. Needs to be almost near perfect with her last rock of this seventh end.
from Terry in this Just situation. Like exactly where she wanted to make the double and now there's a pocket of three on top of that one lone northern ontario stone from the top of the four foot Important shot now for Tracy Horgan is doesn't want to give up a four-point lead. Second, third, and fourth shot belong to Ontario. You can't see much, but then she has the in off this one too. If we over curl and freeze to this one, that's not too bad either. Yeah, if we freeze right here, that's all right. And what happens if we tap them? Not too bad. Or we can just hit that. We were Hawks are just in a, in a strange position. The second, third, and fourth shot for Ontario and creating problems for Tracy Horgan. She's decided just to freeze to that stone just in the top of the forefoot. It would just be third shot. Doesn't want to tap it, which would push Ontario in for shot. If she sits in a good position, it may take away uh, the big end of more than just two for Ontario. So without the hammer, Tracy Horgan looking to just freeze to that stone. Needs to be almost near perfect with her last rock of this seventh end. Where? Oh. Oh. Roll it over, Steph. Roll it over. That little tap is uh, what they do. 
It's now Ontario lying one. And we're looking to see if they possibly have a shot now to bring up, use all those yellows okay, and what happens, have them all count. If we hit what we can see of this one. This is this. Is that gonna and get hope, past there? And hope, hope our that shooter, that hope our shooter catches that. I like that. This should squeak up to yeah, that it will, back, yeah. right? John this just played, hopefully will get past there. John just played big weight at this then? Yeah. Let's just go there and we'll throw a pistol and just hope all the angles work out. It'll be close. I mean, the thing is, because these are so close, if I hit anywhere on this side, this is gonna drag right into that. Like, so we gotta come at this from the side. Like, we gotta hit that one there. Yeah. It's just a matter of where the number six is going, where my shooter's going, whether it's gonna be. If we hit. I think, I think it's there. I think we go there. Yeah. Right there. Peel? Yep. Okay. We gotta hit that real thin, eh, to catch that eight. Do you want to take a little more? Well, it's uh, definitely there taking the risk and trying okay. to score this uh, big It's a very, very complicated shot. Possibility I'm not for really sure what it's multiple do. points. We got to hit it really thin and hope that our shooter will bounce and hit the, the eight that's sitting wide open there. Um, and then if the angles all work out, which, like, it's really tough to tell because they're all so locked. Like, I don't know what stuff's going to drag and what's not. So I don't know. Whatever, let's just throw it. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Just gonna throw this one up. Hope for good things. The way the angles are set up it may just be possible to kill all these reds and score four to tie this game up. Lisa Farnell, last rock, throwing peel weight. Hoping the angles will work out in her favor to we'll try and tie this game up if it all works out for her. Close! Whoa! Finish. Curl! It's just. Nice shot. Need to catch it a little thicker, I believe, to move that stone. I'm just taking a look. It is one for sure. And it is a score of two. Ontario is able to get on, cut into that four point lead. Now just six four, a little thicker. Would have possibly tied this game up as we head to the eighth end. Six four in favor of Northern Ontario. Back inside the Fort William Curling Bar, Curling Club. Just have Amber oh. Gebhardt to start things off. And number eight, a two-point game. Northern Ontario has the hammer again. Okay, can we finish? Yeah, finish, finish hard. Send it back. Finish hard, right to center, right over. Four more at this end. Beauties. Free throw, Amber. Finish on, Amber. Please, like, this much more you would have had. Just trying to draw in behind it, we'll take it a little bit, get it off the center line. Worked out as a tick rather than come into the rings. Two corner ah. guards up now, as Ontario's gonna be going for the steal. Now down, down just two points without the hammer. Three ends remaining. Amber Gebhardt, who is in her second Canadian Juniors, whoa, played whoa, lead whoa. in 2003, and lost the semifinal. Again, that stone off the center line. Three rocks out in front. Stephanie Barbo looking to draw around. Her first one ended up being a tick. Moving that center line off into two corners. Just trying to squeeze it by. Unable to, just a little rub. And a slide just biting top eight foot. It will be wide open and a chance what? Darrell Johnson to hit and roll her first rock of end eight. 
try and tuck one behind that guard. Room? We need something. Oh, gotta touch something, we're up. Yep, yep. No, we're not too bad. Whoa, whoa. Can't get by and it still leaves that Northern Ontario stone shot rock. Northern Ontario has the hammer. Could put like a little split on those stones. A lot of rocks I out like in front. The they are off the center line, so not causing a whole lot of grief. But a two point lead with the hammer. Lying one already. Just going to elect to peel that one. A little surprising as a chance to extend your lead and make a little split on those stones to lie two. A peel here will. Fully Whoa, expose your Northern yeah. Ontario stone and leave a chance for a hit and roll to one of the wide corner guards for Ontario. Won't peels, it'll hit their stone in the rings. It actually gets a roll in behind that corner, so it's sitting in a better position than Lisa Farnell. Can you use one of those guards out in front? Try and tuck on back four foot. Just needs to be buried and shot rock for Darrell Johnson and her second shot of end eight. to say right way to miss and not be heavy on that one slide through but it'll sit as a center line garden now a whole pile of stuff out in front it is northern ontario lying one but a center line guard causing the grief now for tracy horgan and tough to try and peel it out Ontario going to call a timeout, have their coach Jan Pula come out, and they're going to talk about what they want to do on this. Because with the peel, we might... Uh... It's hard both ways. Oh, that's tough. I didn't realize that they were so uh, all over. Yeah. And ours is buried, so... Man, did I do this Which again? Which time did you come around? I thought I had it too. I thought I had it too. Oh, no, wait, wait. Okay. Did I hit the green though, but I did the red thing? No, I think you're just outside. Like, I think she's spinning that. Yeah, you might have a bit more handle than usual. Well, I made three in a row, so. Yeah, that's true. So don't hate. <laughs> Appreciate it. Come around. Just come around. Are we doing? Did we forget we have the hammer? Okay, we're coming around. <laughs> but why did we? Why? Why? I was shocked when we took off that hammer. I know, uh, we were just thinking maybe keep it open and then I can we can draw for one, kind of, but, but I like the come around. Because well, she initially she called, called it original. Come around. Yeah, but I mean, I, I wanted to, I didn't know what we were doing on the first one. I just, I, I, I was shocked when we killed the corner guard. <laughs> we were setting up for two. It was beautiful. Set up for two. Okay. We'll come for, around. Um, now it's a little different with the one out front, but I think I'd still be coming around. Okay. Okay. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right. We heard uh, what the coach had to say about this scenario. Not as much about this shot coming up, but uh, what they played with their last. And not playing the, the split on that stone, trying the peel, but ended up just hitting and rolling her own. We're gonna draw around. Northern Ontario gonna try and Draw around that center line guard. So pile of guards out front, try and hide behind. So an important shot. Amanda Gates wants to try and Lock bury one in behind. Up. Back 12. Where is 
it. It's back coming. Well. Back eight. It's coming down. Bring it right back, I think. Just too heavy there. It'll slide all the way back, as you see. Lisa Farnell just leaving it. It doesn't matter where it sits. As she needs to go for a steal, has yeah, an opportunity now after a big miss from Amanda Gates. Slides too far into the rings. Now Kim Brown going to look to draw around that center line guard. Sit in front of the T-line in a good steal position. With all those rocks out in front, it's definitely a position for a steal. Room. Line's good. Yep. Line's great, guys. Great weight there, it'll sit just Great on the shot, top Kim. of the button. Great weight from Kim. Sits almost fully buried and won't allow for a real hit like unless that. you want to just try and the guard, that's okay. play peel and try and catch the one in the rings or the play just peel that. on the guard. But they're gonna just gonna play hack weight, Lindsay Miner. Try and make a play on that shot stone. You end up chipping that guard, that's all right as well. Open that center line up. Whoa, whoa. No. This one's hanging. We said uh, it's awfully uh, release sensitive. Get it out at all. With the release, it's it's very unforgiving as that one sails by. Tight. And now a chance to Half. release the okay. and Kim Brown to Guard up that stone again even more. Time for a sixth guard out in front. Halfway long. Yeah. Not the type of end that Northern Ontario had in mind for the two-point lead with the hammer in the eighth end. Shot. And the sixth guard goes up, takes away any real shot at that stone That's on it. the forefoot. Tracy Horgan doesn't yeah. have a whole lot of other options other than to try and peel something. This is why I wanted to peel in the first place. Lindsay Miners going to try and peel that centerline guard. We'll probably end up catching another guard out in front. Their second shot of the end, trying to clear yeah. something up for two yeah. skip stones for Tracy Horgan. Yeah. 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 We'll just get the one centerline guard and the shooter will as well, so another guard can be thrown up and as long as it's put up in a good situation, it'll Make a very difficult last shot for Tracy Horgan just to try and get rid of that yellow rock and not give just up the steal. Just anywhere out there. Line's more important than Wade here, but... Okay. And long is fine. Long is perfectly fine. In fact, the longer the better, but we gotta make sure that we're covering this rock, so... Yeah. Just a little off center. First of the skip stones, Lisa Farnell, a skip for Ontario. Trying to no guard shot stone oh, as she trails tight. by oh, two, but over in a good situation. With a good guard on her first. Over and off. Over and off. No! Whoa. No! No! That's okay. That over curls on her, and it will leave access to that shot stone for Tracy Horgan as she's gonna. Needs to capitalize on this shot. Needs to make it through the hole. That was a big miss from Lisa Farnell. Had a chance for the steal if she is able to 
put that guard up. Anywhere plugging that hole. Here? Left a hole now. Probably. Tracy Horgan. Did you want to just throw half then? Or? I think it's half. Then shoot half and sit. Okay. Here. Sure. Tracy Horgan in her first rock of the eighth end, leading by two and has an opportunity now. Needs to capitalize on a miss from Lisa Farnell. Needs to get at shot stone with her first. Whoa. Yes! Yes! Hard! Yes, hard! Not playing the weight, I thought. Just gonna get to it, not gonna move it at all. And I'll still <coughs> give an opening to Lisa Parnell as she can guard it up again. Where'd you have the broom for the last time? Two, four, six, seven guards. Soon to be an eighth with Lisa Farnell. Last rock at the end. She has a chance to guard things up. Needs to make this one. Is her first one over curled? Oh, it picked, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it and picked. It came up short. So, uh... Same weight. That's Make Lisa talking that. about Tracy Horgan's last rock. As the uh, pick came up way light, was trying to hit it, and as you heard her say, I was a little surprised with the weight myself, but that would be the reason why. So Lisa Farnell needing to plug the hole with her last rock, and try and protect that shot stone. to sit down, doesn't want to leave this hole Good again bite. for her. Good, Lise. It'll just bite center line and don't know if there's kind of quite a, a big enough hole. Mm, right, lead but you know as she makes this hole has a chance to score three and make it a nine for a lead with two ends remaining but a big shot could be nine four or six five after Tracy Horgan's last rock of the eight. Needs to make it through the hole as she gets through a little tick off her own and a generous bounce again as she picks up three. Big shot from Tracy Horgan. And it is handshakes. A big shot from Tracy Horgan to seal the victory as they end their losing ways. They move to five and four. And that drops Ontario to three and four. We'll be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from the Fort William Curling Club. And we'll be featuring the Nova Scotia men's team versus PI's gallant team from as we're here in the Fort William Curling Club make sure you tune in tomorrow 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Curl TV's continuing coverage of the 2006 M&M Meat Shops Canadian Junior Championship. where champions can play all year round. West Edmonton Mall.
the greatest indoor show on earth.